Zimbi project. Uh, he's a dedicated proponent of the founding principles of the crypto movement as set up by its originator, uh, Satoshi. He's also working towards the delivery of a new paradigm for financial services. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up to Nick Salvador. Hello, hello. Is this thing on? Hey guys, how's everyone doing today? Good? I know you guys are probably hungry. Uh, so I will keep this as brief as possible to get you guys over to lunch. Um, I am Nick Sapinero. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a project called Divi. And we are Divi Labs, the primary software developer for the Divi blockchain. We essentially started this company with one goal in mind, which was to create accessibility and ease of use in cryptocurrency. We felt from the very early on that building a solid, accessible user experience was going to drive adoption of digital currency, and we still believe that in that today. And that's a lot about what I want to talk about today. Uh, we all know that there's been a huge explosion in this space. Everybody here was probably around at least in 2017. I've been around a little bit longer than that. And we've seen the ups and downs and the downs and downs, and then way back up uh, in recent years. Uh, especially in recent months. However, uh, as this ecosystem grows, we see different effects across the ecosystem, right? Um, there's something called like the logic of collective action, right? So the more people engage with a, a certain collection or a collective, uh, the more divergence you see from the actual goal of that collective action. Right? So you actually see all of these selective incentives breeding inside of cryptocurrency. And this happens outside of cryptocurrency too. It happens in normal business. It happens pretty much in any tribalistic human thing in the world. And what we see now with all these competing narratives is a departure from the things that make crypto important and special. A departure from the fundamentals. And, and while this is happening, in parallel, we see all of these regulatory bodies coming in and trying to either ban it altogether or federate it in some way. Some are trying to use it, and many are trying to tax it, right? Especially in the United States, where I'm from, they are trying to tax it to an extent that is almost impossible to regulate. We see it all the time. The SEC actually just showed up at a conference in New York and served somebody with a subpoena, right? They're coming after us. The, the regulatory bodies of the world have taken notice of cryptocurrency, and they now have their own competing narratives. But this is important. This is actually a good thing, because this is how the industry grows. This is how we get toward maturity in the industry. But unfortunately, because of all the other selective incentives, like meme coins and random rug pulls out there, the fundamentals are kind of being ignored. And this is common in the bull market. It's not the first time that this has happened. But in my opinion, the fundamentals have never been more important than right now in this moment in history. And what are the fundamentals, right? It's all about decentralization. I still believe and have conviction in that theory that money should be owned by the person who holds it, right? Uh, this is going to become more and more important as we strive toward the mainstream adoption of cryptocurrency. If we just turn around and give all of our money back to exchanges, which are essentially banks, if we just turn around and forget about what makes this industry important, we will be back at square one in no time. We should not be sacrificing decentralization for convenience. You don't have to. My company builds ease of use software every single day for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, of course, Divi, and we do not sacrifice decentralization. And it's just as easy, if not easier, than using something like Venmo or PayPal. We don't need to sacrifice. We should be creating solutions that actually are innovative, that aren't just a replication of something that already exists in the traditional tech or the traditional finance world, but actually obviates it. We're supposed to be beating the banks, not becoming them. The oppressor becoming, the oppressed becoming the oppressor is not the goal here, right? And we should be taking a pragmatic approach to compliance. I know that a lot of people probably are like, wait, what? I thought you wanted to beat the banks. I do. But remember in the slide earlier, I was talking about regulatory compliance too, right? The regulators have taken notice of this. They're going to come after it regardless of how we feel about it. So we should be taking a pragmatic approach. People who have an ask forgiveness attitude, it might work today, it might work a year from now, 
but it's not going to work forever. And eventually, that debt will come due. So it's important that we take that pragmatic approach. My company is Divi, Divi Labs. We have spent the last four years doing pretty much everything that I've just described. We have prioritized user experience. You can download our wallet right now. It actually just launched globally. It's called the Divi Wallet. Uh, we've built a pr positive revenue business, right? We've actually spent time not just building hype and generating fake, but actually building revenue and building a real business. So much so that some of our patent pending IP is now being licensed by major organizations. Uh, we actually just signed, and I'm happy to announce this for the first time, a $12.5 million licensing deal uh, for some of our IP. And this includes the Mochi, which is our Masternode one-click cloud installer, which allows you to deploy a Masternode at the click of a button, as well as our staking vaults, which now allow you to, from a decentralized platform, stake from your mobile phone. It's not delegated proof of stake. It's actual staking. You're actually adding blocks to the chain, but it's 100% decentralized and you don't need a full node. We basically developed this proprietary third key that we call the stake vault key, uh, just for the sake of this conversation. And it allows you to essentially remotely broadcast a transaction on behalf of another node. Um, and you could actually set up your own staking vault with a Raspberry Pi or something. I have a guy in our company who set up a staking vault on a paper wallet. And uh, he stakes from his paper wallet to his Raspberry Pi. It's pretty cool. Uh, we also have forged some very, very significant partnerships with uh, big financial institutions in the United States that allow us to basically integrate in a hybrid fashion with the traditional finance world. Uh, this is just some basic information about the Divi wallet. Please give us, uh, give us a look, check us out. Right now, the basic features are there. You can send and receive in seconds or in crypto, like I said, and you can send and receive your favorite coins. Uh, but it goes much further. We're actually here in Dubai to open up our Series A round of investment in order to basically go into what I call Divi 3.0. Uh, we're going to platformize the entire ecosystem, bring smart contracts to our users, allow people to deploy uh, their own apps and tokens and things of that nature, the things that you would expect, as well as work interoperably across chains. Um, so we're building this on Substrate, um, so that it will be interoperable basically out of the gate. Uh, I don't have much time left, so I'm not going to get too deep into this, but if you want to talk more about it, please join us at our booth. It's right around the corner. We're only at the beginning. And I mean we collectively as crypto people, right? Uh, there's a lot more to come. But again, if we admonish the things that the tenants that cryptocurrency is built upon. If we just say, oh, it doesn't need to be decentralized, no one really cares. No one does care, right? A majority of people actually don't care if it's decentralized, but they should. We can build technologies that are decentralized, and they don't even have to know that it's decentralized. We want to make sure that people are safe, secure, and own their money. That's what Divi is about, and I hope that more companies will, uh, will do the same. So um, yes, please come join us at our booth. Once again, my name is Nick Sapinero, and, uh, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Nick, and good luck on your Divi venture. <laughs>